this month, or rather last Sunday, Pastor Nick has started us off powerfully on a series titled Accessing Your Heritage Through the Word of God. Accessing Your Heritage Through the Word of God. And let's just go ahead and read Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. The word of God is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. I love the example that Pastor Nika used. I mean, if it's not broke, why fix it, right? It, she talked about, you know, a will. Right? So when, when people are old enough, they start writing wills and Children are, you know, beneficiaries of the wills of their parents. But if you don't know the content of the will, you won't, you won't have access to it. God has given us an inheritance, a changeless promise. Hallelujah. And each and every one of us, in order for us to access that heritage, we must live by the word of God. We need to know the word of God because it's the word of God that will give us the access to that. Hallelujah. So let's just dive right in. Let's start out with 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Again, just pointing out here that a will is not known until it is read. We don't just... You know, when someone passes away and they have a will in place, they will gather the family, everyone sits, and an attorney would read the will and tell them, which one is your lot? You get this, you get the Beetle, you get the Porsche, right? Like that, they divide it. But until that takes place, no one has access to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verses 9 through 10, and I'll read verse 12. says but it is but as it is written eyes has not seen i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him verse 10 but god has revealed them to us through his spirit through what through the spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god and let's go to verse 12 it says now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. It is the spirit of God, like that estate attorney, that exposes and explains the will of God to us. So let's, since the word of God is a crucial part of accessing your heritage, your inheritance in God, what is the word of God? And I'm going to be quick. I'm going to just kind of crunch down, but there will be some notes online for you to review later. So what is the word of God? There are so many, you know, if you do your study, look through the scriptures, you find there are different words, right? The word of God, the written word, the spoken word, the sent word. But just to, let's simplify it a little bit. I'm just going to really give you two that we're going to focus on today. The living word, first of all, the word of God is God. The word of God is God. Let's go to first John chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Many of us will know that. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Praise the Lord, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2 says, he was in the beginning with God. The word was with God in the beginning. Who is that word? Jesus. The living word himself, the son of God. And then if you go to verse 14 of that, that same chapter 1, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and, beheld, and we beheld his glory, and the, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So if you remember nothing else, Jesus is the word of God. 
the word of God is God himself. Hallelujah. Secondly, the word of God is the revealer of God's intention and will for us on every issue. So remember, the word of God is what gives us access to the will of God. So the, by then, because of that, we can say the word of God is the revealer of God's intention. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 55. Technical, I'm going to need your help on that this morning. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 through 9. Right, well, let's just, let's just go on. Okay, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Verse 9. It says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's thoughts, God's intention are not easily, you can attain them by just mere human understanding on, on your own. You need it's the, the word of God is wrapped in mystery. The Bible says it's the honor of God to what? Conceal a matter, and it's the glory of kings to search them out. So how how is it that how is God's um how does the word of God how's how's the uh, the will of God revealed? It's revealed through the the it's revealed through the written word. Hallelujah. Through the written word. The written word, and that is the logos. This is your scripture, the Bible. That's given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It is one of the ways, right, that God, as we discover the intention and the will of God. If you want to know the will of God concerning your health, you'll find it here. The will of God concerning your marriage, his intention, it's in the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to, I'm going to skip the next slide. So we're going to, one thing I really want us to know, right, is that you have to engage the word in order to access that inheritance. Just like a key to a treasure box, you have to unlock it. And you do that by engaging the word of God. We cannot talk about the word of God without talking about the nature of God. The word of God gives us insights and expression of the nature of God and character of God. Praise the Lord. So, and the devil actively seeks to make sure that you and I don't understand God's true nature. What happened in Genesis chapter 3? Genesis chapter 3 tells us of at, um, Eve, right? Eve was in the garden, and Satan went up to him, to her rather, and he said, you know, this is a fruit that you shouldn't eat out of. Because God doesn't want you to become wise. But was that the will of God? Was that the purpose? The nature of God, we know that God is love. God is not, you know, um, he's not trying to prevent you from being wise. So the devil deceived her, hallelujah. So we have to know, for, to, uh, for us to really get the best out of what God has for us. We have to know that the nature of God the nature of God of the word of God makes it powerful and dependable. Praise the Lord. So let's briefly I my time's running out. Let's talk about seven components or aspects of God's nature of the nature of the word of God rather, the nature of the word and how they help us access the inheritance. Praise the Lord. Understanding the nature of God's word is important because it gives you guidance in accessing your heritage. First thing is, your, is that the word of God is living. And these things are the same reason why you would trust the word of God, right? Why you would trust, why the word of God is dependable. And I'm going to parallel, I'm try to do so quickly, Remember, we defined the word of God as being God himself in the form of Jesus, the word in person, Jesus. And the word of God is also the written word of God. So as we go through, I'm just going to briefly parallel the two. So first, living. The word of God is living. It's not dead. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells us that. Let's go there quickly. 
says, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's powerful and potent. If you don't engage the word, just like a medicine, you have, somebody has malaria, let's say, for example, and they have malarone, they have the medicine in their hand. We know it would knock it out, right, almost quickly. But you don't take that word. It's not gonna, if you don't take that medicine, it's not going to benefit you. Praise the Lord. And also Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. We know that. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Praise the Lord. So Jesus himself is the source of life. Now, in order to access your inheritance through this, through the living word of God, you have to receive it by faith. You receive your inheritance by faith when you believe and obey the word of God. When you believe and obey the word of God, it can restore life to any situation, any death situation in your life. Moving on quickly, the word of God is eternal. It never expires. That's why it's so important that you hold on to the word of God. Doesn't matter how many years passes by. I think it was Branamdi that shared a testimony. He waited, what, over 14 years. The word of God is eternal. You can write down John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, and then Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. So what does this mean? When you understand that the word of God is eternal, that gives you the assurance that God is consistent, that God is dependable. So don't be frustrated. Don't allow things to frustrate you because that's, gonna, that's a tactic of the enemy to prevent you from getting your inheritance. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Be steadfast and immovable. Praise the Lord. When you know that the word of God is eternal, you will be steadfast and immovable. Moving on to the next one we're running through. The word of God is light. As it relates to Jesus, John chapter 1, verses 4, and then John chapter 8. But let's go to Psalm 119, verse 105. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And then let's go to 130, verse 130. Verse 130. Same, same scripture, Psalm 119, verse 130. It says, the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So when we talk about light, we talk about illuminating our path. We talk about showing us the way. When you understand that one, we know that in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And when you engage the word of God, you, you are given the direction. It shows you the way to where, how to access that inheritance. Number four, the truth. The word of God can never lie, right? The word of God is truth. It can never lie. Nor can it ever fail. Thank you. Let's go to, um, so John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus is, it says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except what? Except through me. When you understand, so that's Jesus. Now, when you understand the word of God, the written word of God, that is the truth. So somebody may say, okay, well, you have this condition. That's a fact, okay? That's a fact. But what the word say, what does the word say concerning that issue? 
That is the truth. So we should be satisfied with nothing less than the truth, what the word of God says concerning any situation. Let's go to John chapter 17, verse 17. If you understand that the word of God is truth, you will not settle. John chapter 17, verse 17. It says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Read and believe the word of God. The truth is not what someone cooks up and say, oh, it looks like this is what's happening. Don't let, a lot of times we, we let people speak over our lives and we start believing the lies of the devil. What you need to hold on to is the word of God. Now, I'm not saying deny or say you're somebody, you know, doctor says, okay, you have this X, Y, Z. Don't deny it, but don't claim it. Hallelujah. You speak the word of God, which is truth concerning that situation. The word of God is creative. It can produce and call in exist, into existence the things that were not in existence. This is how God created Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. God said, let there be light, and there was, there was light. Psalm 33, verse, you can write down Psalm 33, verses 6 through 9. And then Ephesians 6, verse 17. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God spoke. The word of God is creative. You know, on Wednesdays, we've been talking about the, the armor of God, right? The, the armor of God. And one of the armor, a part of the armor, rather, is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. So how do you use this? How is this creative? It's creative because it cuts away, right? By cutting away, you're also creating. A sword cuts. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing. Let's, let's go there. I don't want to misquote it. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When you speak the word of God, what you're doing is you're aligning. You're aligning yourself and agreeing with what God has said. Praise the Lord. The word of God is pure and incorruptible. Because God himself is pure, he's light. So nothing, right, all he can do is what? Produce, he cannot produce any less than he is. So his word is pure and incorruptible. Write down 1 Peter 1, 19, Hebrews 9, 14. Sorry, we don't have time to go into all of these, so I'm literally rushing through. But let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, 30, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. So every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Every word of God is pure. If God is pure, his word is pure, you need his word to access your in, uh, inheritance. That also, then that means that the nature, you have, to, you have to be holy. Hallelujah. The word of God releases its full power when the vessels that bear it have the nature of holiness. So you cannot say, I want to access the inheritance that God has given me, but you're dilly-dallying with sin. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Lastly, the word of God is food. Probably weren't expecting to see that up there. But the word of God is food. In John chapter 6, verse 51, Jesus is called the bread of life. Bread, food is needed to impart and to sustain and enjoy life, right? It says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. 
And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Jesus came that we may, li- we may have life and have it what? More abundantly. And we do that by staying connected, by eating, by partaking of his flesh. As it relates to the word, Jeremiah 15, verse 16. You have to engage the word of God. You have to eat the word of God. Literally. John, I mean, Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Your words were found, and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O God of hosts. So the word of God is not just, the written word is not just there to just read and study your Bible. It's really there for building you up, for edifying you. When you abide in the word of God, you abide in Christ, as it says in John chapter 15, you abide in in him and in his word, you will have everything that you desire according to his will what God has put in that inheritance for you. Praise the Lord. So knowing the word of God is not enough, right? You have to know how to engage the word. You have to know how to engage the word to access your inheritance. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of, the, of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. If you go back to verse 3. Okay, maybe actually verse. Yeah, right, actually, it's right there. It says, through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue. The only way you can access the glorious, your glorious inheritance in Christ is through your knowledge and application of God's word. It's not enough to know it. You have to apply the word of God's the God's, God's word of grace. Praise the Lord. We're reminded in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. It says, man, China, this was Jesus. So Jesus was tempted after, you know, he, w- he was on a fast. And Satan came to him and tempted him with, you know, turning stone into bread. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we have to let the word of God literally be everything to us. You have to let the word of God guide you and lead you. I believe it's Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17 that talks about in him we live, we move, and have our being. Acts 17, 28b. But see, when you don't, you know, it's it's Mother's Day, and I know a lot of women are here. And so I'm going to talk to the women for a little bit here. For everyone, and this applies to you men as well, lack of the knowledge of God's word of grace doesn't just affect you, but it affects your children. So when you talk about a will, that will, you can pass it on, right? That will can not just, it may not just be for you, it's also for your children. Let's go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 in Amplified Version. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. In Amplified Version. It says, my people, do they have the plain Amplified? All right, that's fine. It says, my people are destroyed for lack, thank you, of knowledge, knowledge of my law, where I reveal my will. Because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So whatever you're doing, whatever you are pursuing, don't just think you're doing it for you alone. What you do has an impact on your children. Proverbs 13, 22 tells us that a good man leaves a, a inheritance for his children's children. 
the greatest legacy or the greatest inheritance you can leave for your children are not material possessions. They're not houses or even, you know, fat bank accounts. The greatest legacy any parent, any mother can leave is to secure God's inheritance for their children. We have to point them to Christ and pray for them. Praise the Lord. Point them to Christ and pray for them. God's word is the promissory notes that must be present, that must be presented to God in prayer to claim God's inheritance for you and all your children. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 27. This was David speaking, and we can go there, but I'll summarize what led up to this. So before this, David had, you know, they had moved the Ark of the Covenant into, they moved it, and David thought in his heart to build a house for God. And God told him, if you go to verses 15, and God was really touched by that, like, oh, wow, you build a house for me? And so God gave him this blessing that we call the covenant mercies, sure mercies of David. And let's actually go to verses 15 and 16. Second Samuel chapter 7, verses 15 and 16. So what did God tell David? It says, but my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I, ha- I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. So God was, you know, speaking through the prophet to David. But David didn't just stop there. What did he do? Let's go to verse 27. He, it says, For you, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, have revealed this to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found it in his heart to pray this prayer to you. He was presenting it to God. God, you promised this, so I'm presenting it to you. So as mothers, we see things going on with our children. Are you just going to take it, or you're going to go back to what God has said about that child? You're going to say, God, you promised me. Your word is that the blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow. You go before him, and you remind him of that. See, if you, if you neglect to claim your inheritance, you can receive it. You can't receive something you neglect. There's something, there's a a term that they use called successor of interest. So typically if somebody passes and they're trying to find, you know, trying to give them, oh, maybe you have, um, I don't know, a bag that belongs to you. They, They need to find the next person who is a, correct me if I'm wrong, who is an heir, who is a successor of interest. But if that successor of interest does not show up, does not come to claim what is rightfully theirs, they can never lay hold of it. It just goes, it just sits there. And as mothers, you know, I think it was Pastor me sharing this, that we do have the power of attorney for our children. We know what God has said concerning them. So we are to continue to bring them, bring them onto the altar of prayer, present them to God. Don't accept what the enemy has said. Don't accept, you know, what the schools have said about your children. The prayer, you know, the prayer of a a mother is is very powerful. Very powerful. And I can tell you, I'm a beneficiary of a praying mother. And it's so interesting. Not only can you pray to have, to deal with an issue, but you can also pray some things into the lives of your children. Good things. I remember when I was, um, I was 16, I was driver's ed, and my first time driving, um, my, I remember the exact intersection, Beltway 8 and Gessner. My mom looked over and said, I was 16. Are you want, do you want to marry a pastor? And I was like, I never thought of it. And I was like, no, now I would never want to. So whether or not God told her that God revealed it to her, or she prayed it, either way she was a praying mother because she figured it out. And she'll always pray, all my children will serve God. All my, they won't just know God, but they will serve God. So you can commit your children. You can, you can give them to God without, before they even know God for themselves. That is the power we have as mothers. You have the right to claim God's inheritances for your children. Praise the Lord. And there are 
promises. We're going to pray, just rounding up here quickly, zooming through. So we're going to pray here shortly. There are five promises that I want us to talk about today that we need to claim today for our children and for every mother here. One, the first promise is the promise of fruitfulness. Praise the Lord. The promise of fruitfulness. We're going to pray, so I'm just going to read them. The second one is the promise that our children will be established in righteousness. Also, our God has promised that our children will be great and they will do great things. God promised in his word in Isaiah chapter 65 that we will not bring forth children for trouble. And the last promise for every mother here, mothers now, mothers to be, that we will long enjoy the fruit of our labors in the mighty name of Jesus. So we're going to rise up on our feet. It's not just going to be mothers, so everyone, go ahead and rise up on your feet this morning. Or, and we're going to pray those prayers. I, um, you don't have to worry about writing them down. The scriptures are on the slides. And if I didn't call out a promise that is relevant to you, go back to the word of God and search it out. It is there. But you need to pray. You need to bring those things to the remembrance of God. Hallelujah. So first, we're going to pray for everyone. You know, when, when God created Adam and Eve, he created them. And he said in verses 27 to 28 of Genesis 1, he says he created them and he told them to be fruitful and multiply. Exodus 23, 26 says what? None shall be barren in the land. None shall suffer miscarriage. And Psalm 113, verse 9 says, he makes the barren woman, he gives the barren woman a home and makes her a joyful mother of children. These are the actual scriptures that I held on to when I was going, I was looking or believing God for children. So I want us to pray, whether you have your children now or you know someone who's believing God for a child, or if you are here, you're believing God for a child. I want us just to join our faiths together and just pray that everyone here, every mother here, every woman, has God created you with a womb to be a mother. So I want us to pray right now. Just lift up your voice and begin to remind God and say, God, according to your promise. So you're not praying something that God didn't already plan for. This is a promise. So I want us to pray and say, Lord, according to your word, in the book of Genesis, every one of us, every woman here is fruitful in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray and say, Lord, if you know that person, I want you to say, Lord, concerning my sister, concerning my brother, that's believing you for the fruit of the womb. Thank you, Lord, because they are fruitful. You made them perfect. You made them, they are whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because according to your word, none will suffer miscarriage in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. According to your word, oh God, we are reminding you of your promise on this altar today and we pray oh God that everyone that is believing you for fruit of the womb father lord you will grant them a home you will grant the barren a home and make them joyful mothers joyful parents of their own children in the mighty name of Jesus one of the promises that is that your children will be established in righteousness Isaiah chapter 54 from verse 13 says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord, and grace shall be the peace of your children. It didn't say all your children shall be taught by society. When God teaches your children, it doesn't matter where you put them. I think it's Dick and Bailey that gives the example that his mother will always pray, you know, where my eyes cannot get to. There are places that eventually, I mean, you don't go to daycare, even if you have the camera, you can't see every single thing. So I want us to pray the word of God verbatim and say, 
In this house, every child will be taught by the Lord. They will know God. God himself will teach them. No, the society will not influence or teach our children in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray and say, every child in this house shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be their peace in the mighty name of Jesus. All our children in this house, they shall be established in righteousness. They shall be established in righteousness. They'll be far from oppression in the mighty name of Jesus. They'll be far from negative peer pressure in the mighty name of Jesus. In this society, our children shall be pure. They shall be kept for you. They shall be set apart for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you because concerning our children, oh God, for our children are set apart for you. According to your word, Lord, you says your people shall all be righteous. We decree, oh God, our children shall be established up, shall be established in you. They will be deeply rooted in you, oh God. They will be established, firmly rooted in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Our children will inherit the land. They will inherit the promise promises, uh, those great things that you have for them, they will inherit in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because your name will be glorified in the lives of our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Another promise is that your children shall be great and do great things. I don't know about you, but <laughs> a few, maybe sometime last year, something happened to my children and I told them, I said, okay, let me tell you. If you don't know right now, if I've never told you your story before, let me tell you the story of your life. Nobody wants to work and labor in vain. So we're going to pray. These are promises that God has said. So it's not something that we're cooking up. God has said it. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. It says, here... Am I and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonder in Israel. Hallelujah. Genesis 21 verse 18. Genesis 21 verse 18. These are the promises of God, so we are going to pray them. It says, Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Our children will be great. Psalm 1, 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 25. And then Saul said to David, then Saul said to David, may you be blessed, my son, David. You shall, be, you shall both do great things and also still prevail. So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. I want us to pray for every child. If you are a parent here, or if you're a mother or father, pray for your children and then pray for every child in DIC. I want you to pray and say, Father Lord, all our children in this house, according to your word, they will be great in the name of Jesus. Your promise, you said, oh God, in your word, that you will make our children a great nation. According to your word, oh God, we bring these things into your remembrance concerning our children. They will be great and they will do great things. In the mighty name of Jesus, our children shall be pasted as and role models in their generation our children oh god shall 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 be above only in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you because each and every child here in DIC Spring, Father Lord, we thank you because your excellent spirit is upon them. Thank you, Father, because our children will be saviors to their generation. Our children, oh God, they will, they, they will go forth even to conquer this, this world, this generation for you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, mighty God, because our children are set apart for your, and your light will shine through them in Jesus' mighty name. One of the most unfortunate things that can happen in life is for a parent to labor, 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 train a child, send them to school, you know, do all these things. And then that child being, ends up being a headache. And when you should be enjoying that child, you are spending time whether in rehab or whatnot, but that would not be our portion in Jesus' name. So we're going to pray Isaiah chapter 65, verse 23. It says, They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble, for they shall be descendants, they shall be the, the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. 
I want you to pray. If you're a parent here, I want you to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, I will not labor in vain over my children in the mighty name of Jesus, nor shall I bring forth children for trouble. You know, as a mother, you know how, what the pregnancy was like. You know the things you labored. You know what you sacrificed. You know how many school runs you did. I want you to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, all my labor will not be in vain concerning each and every one of my children in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I will not bring forth children for trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. According to your word, my children will be great. My children will make me joyful in the mighty name of Jesus. My children, they are blessed of the Lord. They are blessed of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God, because our children will always be a source of joy for us in this house in the mighty name of Jesus father we thank you we give you praise mighty God in Jesus mighty name last two prayer points here My time is up the last promise today says you shall long enjoy the fruit of your labor Isaiah chapter 65 verses 21 to 23 22 says they shall build houses and inhabit them they shall plant vineyard, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Amen. They shall not build and another inhabit. Amen. They shall not plant and another eat. Amen. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. Amen. My elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. Amen. When you are, when you've trained up a child and you're expecting the harvest, right? Your investment. They say it takes, I don't know, a million dollars to train a child from up until age 18. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. When it comes time to start enjoying that, nobody else will eat it for you in Jesus' name. I want us to pray and decree the word of God and say, I will not labor in vain. Say, I will not build house for another to inhabit. That means I will not sweat and somebody else will enjoy my sweat, the fruits of my sweat in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray and say, Father, Lord, I will build and inhabit. I will plant and eat the fruit thereof in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not build for another to inhabit in the mighty name of Jesus. All our labors, all our labors over our children will not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not plant for another to eat. We that we have labored over our children will enjoy the benefits in the mighty name of Jesus. When our children are graduating, when they are getting married, when they are doing great things for you, oh God, we will be there to enjoy them in the mighty name of Jesus. When our children, oh God, when, when, when they're when they are prospering, we will be there to enjoy it in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, Pastor, when we, during the, if you miss, if you're a woman here and you miss the the night vigil, please go back and watch it. It was really powerful. She talked about laboring in vain, having a few definitions. One of them was to gain the whole world and lose your soul. Another was to have absolutely nothing to show for your efforts. And then she said, the last one was to have something to show, but you are not able to enjoy it. When the children are doing great things, then because of one sickness or another, you're not able to enjoy that. But that would not be our portion. The scripture says, for as the days of a tree, so shall, there, so shall be the days of my people. My elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. I want you to pray and say, Father, Lord, according to your word, my days shall be long. I will long live to enjoy all, the, all the, my labor over my children. I will enjoy the works of my hands. I will enjoy my labor over my children in the mighty name of Jesus. I will enjoy it. I will not just be there, but I will be there in health in the mighty name of Jesus. I will be there to enjoy. I want you to pray and say, Father, Lord, I will be there. I will be healthy. I will long live to enjoy the works of my hands. First Kings chapter 1 verse 48 says, in the Living Bible translation, it says, He is saying, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has selected one of my sons to sit upon my throne while I am still alive to see it. We all want to see our kids do great. We're not praying for somebody else to, to replace us. We will not be replaced in Jesus' name. We will not be replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want you to pray and say, Father, Lord, 
where my children are doing great things. My, as my children, according to your word, as, they, are, as they, pro, they will prosper. And as they are prospering and are doing great things for you, I will see it in the mighty name of Jesus. I will see it when they are, when they are being promoted, when they are doing great things in your kingdom. I will be there to see it in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray against any form of sickness, any sickness. I want you to pray against premature death, anything that would hinder you from enjoying all the fruits of your labor over your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, even for these promises. We thank you for your word. We thank you, oh God, for your word that gives us access to your goodly inheritance. Father, we thank you for your promises that you have spoken over us, oh God. We thank Thank you, Father, and we are sure that we will lay hold of them by your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Every promise for every woman and every parent here. Father, we thank you, O oh God, because we will enjoy. We will enjoy all the fruits of our labor over our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for making everyone fruitful. Thank you because our children are thought of you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you praise, mighty God. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah.